At Team Toyota, they've been selling and servicing new and used Toyotas in your community for over 50 years. And you can reserve your next new Toyota with them today. You'll get a realistic timeline, and even in this crazy market, they won't charge you over MSRP. Or don't wait at all. With over 75 certified Toyotas, including a bunch of RAV4 and Highlanders, you can drive one home today. And you can always trust them to maintain your current vehicle. Their service and collision centers are high-tech, comfortable, and will save you time and money. Team Toyota can help you go anywhere you want, but they'll always be your hometown team. Just visit TeamToyota.net and choose from three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Hey folks, this is the Phillies Talk Podcast with Corey Seidman and Jim Salisbury. Thanks for checking us out the morning after Game 3, in which the Phillies beat the Padres 4-2 to take a two-games-to-one lead in the NLCS. It was a uh, tense playoff atmosphere from start to finish, Jim. A game that was within two runs from the first inning on. Uh, and there's a lot to talk about. You know, offensive heroes from for the Phillies from the get-go. There was also some really clutch bullpen work late in the game uh, Rob Thompson making some gutsy decisions, but you know it's as it has been the case for the, the past like four months, they seem to work out for the Phils. No question, he was gutsy. He was very aggressive. Um, you know, short series uh, where you know every win advances you at this stage, you know, twenty five percent of the way to where you want to go. Uh, four wins. Uh, he was very very aggressive in his bullpen usage, in locking down a game that he felt, obviously, they had to win. Big crowd at home, right? Big stakes. Got to gotta catch that baby in. They had a lead, and um, he was aggressive in his bullpen moves in the middle of the game, and even late in the game, uh, employing Sir Anthony Dominguez for two innings. He hadn't done that all year. Uh, he's a guy they're generally pretty careful with because he's still, you know, relatively not that far removed from Tommy John's surgery. So they protect him a little bit. He's important to the now and the future. And, you know, you have an obligation to watch out for his health just for his own well-being. Anyway, uh, six big outs from Sir Anthony Dominguez. First time he went two innings all year. And, um, um, you know, uh, Alvarado and Zach Eflin also getting six outs. Um, you know, I have to admit I was, you know, it really – Grabbed my attention when he removed Ranger Suarez after five innings. It was, you know, it was like, okay, what are we doing here? Um, because, you know, I think Rangers, even though he had Manny Machado and Drury coming up, two right-handed bats, Rangers a left-hander, you know, I believe in Ranger. I mean, I think a team should believe in Rangers. Good major league pitcher. He's got a full repertoire. He should be able to grab those guys and get them out in the middle of the game. Um, but, uh you know, Thompson made his move. He said Ranger hadn't pitched in nine days. I mean, big deal. That's one start, right? Um, he said Ranger was approaching 70 pitches. A big deal. The guy's stretched out. Um, this, to me, was about being aggressive with the bullpen, changing the look in the middle of the game, and, um, you know, locking this baby down. And, and, and he got it done. His guys executed for him. Uh, so it was uh, – uh, Thompson, I asked him, I talked to him after the game. He said it's something they talked about before the game. It was kind of in the plan. Uh, and he really confirmed that by saying, uh, to me, confirmed that by saying, if they had been down in that game, if they had been trailing, he would have stuck with Ranger. And Ranger would have, quote, unquote, you know, stayed in the game to save the bullpen. Uh, but, you know, he pulled Ranger. There was no save in the bullpen. It's kind of like, Why? bleep tomorrow, we need to lock this baby down. And his players executed for him. Eflin, Alvarado, and um, and Serenity Dominguez executed. And it's a team game. The people executed behind them. Eflin gave up a couple hits, and Segura and Stott turn a huge double play to get out of that sixth inning. And then Segura makes a diving play to end the top of the seventh on, on Kim – just a fantastic play. I thought that ball was by him. I thought that ball was into the outfield and going to be trouble. Here you go, two men on base. Segura makes a great play um, and, you know, confirms once again one of the beautiful things about this game is that it's not how you start. It's not. It's, it's how you finish. It's that you know, throughout a game you're going to be presented with opportunities to atone and redeem yourself. And Segura made a bad error. That cost him a run. 
uh, early in that game. Well, he made up for it with three big defensive plays in that game, too, in uh, uh, diving stops and uh, a big turn of a double play. And, of course, that two-run single uh, to put the Phillies uh, up by two runs and a protective lead. So the Segura, big game, but Rob Thompson, big game with his decision-making, uh, with trusting his players, with being aggressive in a short series, with pushing Sir Anthony to a place he's never been before. And all those guys executed for him, make their manager look good. That's how you make a manager look good. Um, any manager will tell you it's up to the players to make them look good, but he had a he had a plan. He had the guts to, to execute it, and – and it worked, and now he's two wins away from the World Series. It seems like, you know, almost everything's going right for the Phillies this month, which is why many people in this area just feel that there's, you know, something special happening here. Uh, you know, you look at how loud these crowds have been at home in the three home playoff games the Phillies have had. They've Im- immediately jumped out to a lead in all three of them. Uh, in game three last night, Kyle Schorber hitting a full count fastball from Joe Musgrove uh, to right center for a solo home run. Schwarber's pretty hot. Reached base in 12 of his last 21 plate appearances. And, you know, that got everybody into it from the get-go in game three. Uh, Gene Segura, as you mentioned, the two-run single he hits. It's a ball that's way out of the zone, a slider from Joe Musgrove yeah. that's low and away. But there's certain guys, like you remember Vladdy Guerrero, obviously was a bad ball hitter. Gene Segura is a bad ball hitter. He can get to, he can get to you know, fastballs high out of the zone or breaking balls low and away out of the zone as he did last night and loop it over the second baseman's head for a clutch hit. Uh, and yeah, those those plays in the field from Segura. And the, you know, you think about the crucial time of all three of them. The first one was a Trent Grisham play that led off the second inning. If he gets on base for the top of the order, could be a bigger inning for the Padres. The second, the second play, the double play, ends an inning with runners on the corners, and the third one prevents the Padres from putting runners on the corners. And again, all of this happening in a close game. You know, Gene Segura waited forever to make the playoffs, but he's really making the most out of this opportunity. No question. You can hear my little doggy uh, cheering for Gene Segura in the background. She, she <laughs> anyway, fled, she you make a lot of good points. I would urge the listeners to read your story about Gene Segura today. Um, you know about his game. And his contribution is a great piece on NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com. Um, you know, early, you just kind of said so much is going their way. I mean, that started in St. Louis. Um, they're down 2 nothing in the ninth inning. They rallied for six because, the, you know, St. Louis's closer can't throw strikes. In a lot of ways, they're given that game, but they took that game by being selective, having good at-bats. And the guy you just talked about, Gene Segura, hits a bad ball through for, for uh, to, I think, a two-run single. That was a huge, huge uh, hit in that inning. And it was off the plate and it was a slider away. It was like the same pitch, slider away. And he showed amazing hand-eye coordination, bat head control, and got enough on it and gets it through the infield. So, yeah, I mean, he's a bad ball hitter. But, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I've been to the Dominican Republic um, to do baseball stories. And um, the kids down there, they play a game. It's called Vitilla, V-I-T-E-L-L-A. And uh, so, you know, those big five gallon water jugs that you see in an office, you flip over and uh, big five gallon ones and has the blue cap on it. And uh, so they take that blue cap. It's like a disc, um, you know, the size of a, I don't know, um, maybe like a lemon. Um, And uh, that disc, you know, you can, if you throw it sidearm, you can really scale it and, you know, it's a bottle cap. But they, you can really the, the way you can really scale it through the air, kind of sidearm it, and they play with a broomstick and they pitch it to each other, and it's called bitia. Uh, and so just think about it: they're, they're scaling this disc that's moving all different ways, and they got a broomstick in their hand. It's tough to hit. Well, it teaches you hand eye and teaches you teaches you bat control and bat head control, and um, it. You know, that's why I, I guarantee you Gene Segura played that game as a kid, and he looked like he was playing Bitia in those two hits. Um, so really a, a great job. And he, after the game, he talked about dealing with pressure and of his first postseason and uh, coming back from an era and playing so well. And like you mentioned, that huge crowd. And he basically shrugged off the pressure. <laughs> he said that, you know, back home in the Dominican Republic, when you're a kid, there's people with machetes in the stands. So the implication was, you know, what are they going to do with those machetes if you don't play well? So that's real pressure. But he's clearly enjoying <clears throat> this postseason ride, and he's clearly playing well. And I mean, you mentioned Schwarber and the big crowd, and I mean that was dramatic and it was important. 
uh, that home run three, two, um, you're talking about bat control. Uh, you know, he kind of, that, that was like a little cutter away. It looked like he tried to backdoor him and, and he just, you know, stayed right on it and he lifts it out of the ballpark. And that set the tone for the evening and kind of capsulized why they brought Gene, uh, why they brought Kyle Schwarber to Philadelphia, spent $79 million on him because they wanted the power stick and he led the national league in home runs and, they wanted somebody who could guide them to October, somebody who's been there before, somebody who had a winning resume, somebody who knew what the postseason smelled and tasted like and felt like. And he's been there and, um, you know, power bat and postseason experience. It, it all kind of came to a head right there in the first at bat of the bottom of the first inning and set a big tone that the Phillies were not going to let that night slip through their fingers and, and they didn't. They played poor defense in a couple of pockets, uh, which is a concern. Which is a concern. Defense lost them a game in Atlanta, and uh, you just hope it doesn't lose them another one because it cost them two runs <clears throat> Friday night. But they overcame that and ultimately played some good defense uh, when they really had to, especially Segura. And uh, manager made a big decision. Players made it work. Great job by the bullpen, and and they go into you know, game four with a, a two to one lead. Uh, the Phillies have committed six errors in their last five games. They've committed two errors in this NLCS on trying to turn double plays where, you know, they're trying to turn it too quickly and, uh, you know, forgetting to get one out before trying to get two, but they've been able to work around it both times. Uh, one of them coming in the ninth inning in game one. And then obviously in game three, uh, the Phillies did a really good job against Joe Musgrove last night, too. They made him work. They had four doubles and a homer off of him. Alec Bohm having one of the doubles, Bryson Stott with two, and Nick Castellanos with one. So the Phillies have done a decent job in this series against Hugh Darvish and Joe Musgrove, two best right-handed pitchers that the Padres have to offer. Uh, but, Jim, I just want to real quick double back to Sir Anthony Dominguez because a month ago, this is a guy that there was uncertainty over. Like, how how big of an impact is he going to be able to make down the stretch? How healthy is he? Uh, how good is he going to be in the playoffs? If you remember, he got blown up by the Braves in mid-September, allowed five runs and two-thirds of an inning in a game in Atlanta. And yet here we are in the playoffs. Sir Anthony Dominguez, the first batter he faced in the playoffs was Albert Pujols, who had a single. And then he retired 17 in a row until Josh Bell singled to lead off the ninth inning last night. I mean, we're seeing Sir Anthony Dominguez, it seems like, emerge into one of the better relievers in all of baseball. This is a guy who's 27 years old, under team control. You know, you start to wonder how big can this month be for his future, just in terms of the confidence that he's growing. He's retiring some of the best hitters in the National League with ease. Yeah, um, this is a great training tool and for his future, as you mentioned. But I think more importantly, in, in the in the, in, in the immediate time frame here he's helping them win postseason games and you know what changed since mid-september um you know he had that he was down for about a month with that triceps issue um that he initially said he was worried about but then a couple days later wasn't really worried about and it went away pretty quick but they were really judicious in bringing him back and took their time um, he and Zach Wheeler both had late season arm trouble that, you know, in retrospect, I don't think either one of them were very serious. And I think the organization saw it as an opportunity to get two really valuable guys, much needed rest. So they were kind of rolling the dice that they were going to get here to the postseason and um, had a vibe they were going to get there, feeling they were going to get there. And they prioritized rest for. You know, two of their most important arms. You know, the guy that your best starter and your best finisher, and it's really looks like it's it's a genius move here because both guys have come back, you know, firing and healthy and strong and confident. And Sir Anthony, it didn't happen right away. September was a struggle for him. Um, he had trouble finding his command. I mean, like Bryce Harper had trouble finding his time and coming off the IL. It takes time. Uh, but it did click, and it got it clicked at a great time. Right as they're going into the postseason, confidence is sky high. The slider, the fastball, everything is popping, uh, and he's just looking great. This is sort of like the best run of his career, and the Phillies are really benefiting from it. But you know, organizationally, 
the way they got those two guys rest w- was just was huge, uh, and and we're seeing we're seeing it now uh, how it's benefiting them. Um, so yeah, it, what does it mean for Serena? You know, you you test yourself in in these cauldrons that that are playoff settings, and uh, you just and you have, and you couple that with talent. You know, um, all of a sudden you're you're developing the skill of how to succeed in 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 big games and hostile environments. It just makes you that much better. So. They always felt like they had something pretty special in Sir Anthony. And, you know, it was a difficult journey with the Tommy John surgery and a long layoff. And, um, but he's come back. And I, th- I think one of the biggest things is what we're seeing this month in the postseason here is an example of, of confidence in your stuff, confidence that you can get the job done, but also confidence that you're healthy. And Because uh, I think when he came back in September, he was feeling for it a little bit. He wasn't quite sure if he could let it go. And then, boom, a couple things click, gets those big outs against um, against Arenado and, and Goldschmidt, if you remember, in, in St. Louis. And uh, then you kind of go in the clubhouse, you sit there, and you think, wow, I just threw 101, and I retired two of the MVP candidates in the league. I'm back. And um, let the mind take and lead the body. And that's what we're seeing in Serenity. Well, Jim, so, you know, the decisions, the pitching decisions Rob Thompson made in game three, they impact game four because it's yeah. going to be an unusual uh, situation for the Phillies. I don't think they'll have Sir Anthony. I mean, that's, your, that's right. a big impact. I do not think they'll have Sir Anthony. Um, Alvarado, 27 pitches. I don't think they would admit to not having him, but I, I think that could be iffy. But it definitely impacts some of the moves they're going to make. But, again, Rob Thompson's um, – Rob Thompson's uh, – Approach Friday night was bleep tomorrow, and it really worked. And in a short series, I I, uh, I take my hat off to him because I was I was one of the people that was, you know, thinking Rangers should stay in that game. So, um, yeah, it impacts today, but they're going to need other people to step up like they have in the past. So Bailey Falter is getting the start. Lefty, is this? Do you think just based on uh, the Padres having dangerous left-handed hitters, this start went to Noah Syndergaard in the last round? Yeah, I think this is another bold play by Thompson and his pitching brain trust because um, Bailey Falter's pitched one inning in the last three weeks. And baseball is a game where you constantly have to be doing it to stay sharp, whether you're a hitter or a fielder or a pitcher. Uh, you can have all the bullpen sessions in the world, but it's different. So, I mean, I think rust is going to be a you know a serious possibility. They're going to just look for three outs, one time through the lineup, and yeah, it's a lot. A lot of it's matchup based. Obviously, a couple tough lefties in there, and in in, uh, in um, Soto and Cronenworth, uh, and there's some neutral splits um, that they think in that lineup that, you know, they think Falter profiles a little bit better than Syndergaard does. So that's why they made the decision. All that said, you could see Syndergaard in that game, maybe for multiple innings. Uh, he could be the first man out after after Falter, depending on how the lineup sets up. But, you know, again, so many of the moves this team has made and so many of the things that's happened to this team from the, the ninth inning in St. Louis to, to the check swing – in the ninth inning last night with Juris and Profar. It just feels like everything's going the Phillies' way. That was a – you know, I'm not saying the umpire blew that call. It was like 50-50. It could have gone either way. Everything's going the Phillies' way. The ninth inning in St. Louis, the check swing last night. And another example was the clincher for me. Another example is the clincher in, in Philadelphia against the Braves when they – said, okay, Noah Syndergaard is going to get us nine outs. He did it. And then it becomes a a, a relay race through the bullpen. You get three outs, you get three outs, you get three outs, you get three outs. Next thing you know, six pitchers have struck out 15, walked none, and got the job done and clinched. So many of the moves this team has made um, have either worked out like fate is shining on them or just worked out because they've made it work out. And, you know, last night, Rob Thompson made a move, and the bullpen made it work out. The defense made it work out. In St. Louis, you know, Ryan Helsley was giving them base runners, and they made it work out because they took them and had good at bats. Um, they got the pro far call. That that would have that could have changed the entire ninth inning last night. It was like an underrated, under the radar moment. So much to that game, but um, they're gonna take this route again with the bullpen. 
And um, if if past is prologue, then it might work again. It probably it could work again, and they might be one win away. Yeah, that Profar uh, check swing call it came on a full count. If he walks there, it's first and second with nobody right. out in a two run game with Sir Anthony Dominguez in his second inning of work. All of a sudden, you know the the pressure starts to creep in there. Uh, it, it's totally different game, and I mean that's why. What happened in the middle of game two was so startling when Aaron Nola allowed all those runs at the Padres because it was like the first time in this playoff run that another team has done to the Phillies what they've been doing to their opponents for most of it. Uh, but here we are, game four, Bailey Falter on the mound for the Phillies. The Padres announcing last night they're going to start Mike Clevenger, the right-hander who has that funky little uh, setup where he twists his glove all around. So get 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 ready to, to watch that for a few innings tonight. Clevenger was hit around by the Dodgers in the last round. Uh, he did pitch five scoreless innings against the Phillies earlier this season. Feels silly to say, hey, this is a big game because they're obviously all big games from here on. But, you know, game four, you start to look ahead. Zach Wheeler in game five, Aaron Nola in game six. If the Phillies can win this one, they're going to feel pretty incredible about their chances to make it to the World Series. No question. I mean, if, again, the way they ran that bullpen last night and, and getting that win – uh, if they can get one today, they are going to be just absolutely sitting pretty with your two best guys and needing only one more win. Um, and if, if they get it on on um, if they get a win on Saturday night with you know the way they're going to run the pitching, I mean they're going to have to hit. The bats are going to have to really come alive. Uh, it'd be nice if Schwarber kept us up and, and Harper and I mean Reese Hoskins' his defense has been uh, poor. He, you know, he can atone in a big way with the bat. Um, it was really good to see Castellanos and Bohm come alive with two outs. Uh, they're going to need, you know, they're going to need to support this pitching plan tonight with some runs. Um, but if they can get a victory, they, you know, on Sunday with Zach Wheeler, they're going to be in really good shape. And one of the other things that's worked out so well for this team is, you know, they their pitching has been rested going into series. You know, they were able to, um, you know, if, if they can lock it up on Sunday, uh, you're talking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if they could lock it up on Sunday with Wheeler, and I apologize, I'm getting way ahead of myself and um, violating all my own rules here. You know, it's, it's kind of one day at a time. But um, let's just say they pull it off uh, a win on Saturday and, if if Wheeler can capitalize on another big home crowd on a Sunday afternoon, I mean, no Eagles, the attention, the entire attention, sporting attention of the region will be on Citizens Bank Park. Win behind, win Saturday, and then win behind Wheeler on Sunday, and he's on four days rest going into Game One of the World Series on Friday. So, just another example of how things could potentially line up well for this team. But you know, first things first, you got to go out there. And play well. Um, you're in front of a great crowd. There are no machetes in the stands. Um, just a lot of Hopefully. people cheering hard and try to try to feed off that. Try to feed off that. Keep the machetes away and and get another victory. Well, Jim, uh, you know the Phillies over the last calendar month. It's kind of funny to think about. They're 11 and 10 over the last calendar month, but they're getting really hot when it matters most. And there's no question they've been the best. National League team so far in these playoffs. If they end up making it to the World Series, they could very well end up facing the Astros team that this run began against when they, you know, they clinched down in Houston. So yeah, well, you know, get hot and get in. How many times have we seen it? Get hot and get in. I'm sorry, I just reversed that. It's, I've been up since I went to didn't go to bed till after three in the morning. It's been a long month for get, you. Get in and 20. get hot. Get in That's and get hot. Guys, more and that's like 20 hour days. So, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a fascinating daily chapter, and, and I'm really eager to see what how Saturday's chapter reads. Phillies Padres game four. It is Saturday night at Citizens Bank Park. We'll see if the Phillies can take a commanding series lead. Thanks for listening to the Phillies Talk podcast. We'll be back with you soon.